sneeze. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome class tooling for Visual Studio Code or Android Studio, IntelliJ or the programming editor of your choice. And you have Flutter, a framework for building beautiful native experiences for iOS or Android from a single code base. Thank you. Thank you. So Tim told you about the four tenets of Flutter, beautiful, fast, productive, and open. And it was OK, right? It was a little bit theoretical. But fortunately, I'm here now. Starts immediately, right? This is because Flutter compiles ahead of time to ARM code. Right? So there's no JIT to warm up. There are no scripts to parse. It just starts executing fast. Right? Second, this is, um, uh, this is an Android device, and this is uh, an iPhone. And as you can see, you know, the basic interaction is completely natural. Uh, if you go to a different screen, you know, uh, everything works as you would expect. So but let's take this a little further, right? So it's nice to scroll, but let's zoom. So I'm going to zoom right past dinosaurs, because it turns out nobody likes dinosaurs. Uh, humans. This is the red dot that we saw earlier. And now, as you can see, at any moment, at any scroll position, at any zoom level, we show what makes the most sense. And that is possible, again, because Flutter is fast. You can actually, or we can actually, recompute what to show on every frame. And this is basically a requirement for any very custom UI, where you want to be able to rebuild things and be interactive 60 frames per second. OK, but let's take this a little bit further. So you might be thinking, oh, these are cool. Uh, I like these little animations. And you might also be thinking that these are actually you know, pre-computed, uh, a GIF or maybe a video. But these are actually vector animations that we're building on every frame with Flutter. So for example, this one, I can sway the tree above of Newton. And I like how, like, the apple still <laughs> falls on Newton's head, it's because, you know, life is hard. Um, and this is possible uh, because, again, Flutter is fast, but also because Flutter, at its deepest level, uses Skia rendering engine. Re uh, Skia is hardware accelerated. It paints directly to your graphics card, and you own all the pixels. So whatever beautiful design your designer designs, OK. <laughs> Uh, whatever, whatever artwork your art person does, <laughs> um, you can do it. And you can do it, again, for 60 frames per second. Trying to find this venue earlier today, you know, I got lost in London, <laughs> and I was very sad. But I had a device with me uh, connected to the internet. And, you know, there's this uh, service by Google that you use if you have a phone with you, and you lost. Um, and as you can see, uh, you know, in this little animation, wait, what is this? Can you see that? Uh, let me zoom in. Oh, is this an actual Google map running inside my Flutter application <laughs> while it's being swayed around? <laughs> you know, sure. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to announce the general availability of Flutter 1.0. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Will. So, hello everyone. My name is Jacob. I am a co-founder at Reflectly, uh, where I also head up uh, UX UI design as well as front-end development. Now, Reflectly is what we call a conversation-based journal. Now, what that means is that everyday users open up the app and go through a series of questions, which helps them lock down their day. However, instead of just presenting them with like a blank screen and they fill in some text, like you would in a traditional journal, we prompt them with very specific UI interactions, such as rating their day with a little smiley face slider or selecting an icon that best represented well how the day went. 
Now, all of this is then bundled together into what we call a story. Now, um, users can then go back in their journal and reread the stories to see what were they up to and how did they actually feel. However, we can also show them how they've been progressing over time, but give them aggregated statistics. Now, all of this makes Reflectly understandable and easy to use. However, what's even more important to us is we're seeing it bringing immense value to our users. We're actually seeing users become happier over time by using Reflectly, which of course is amazing. Now, Reflectly is just around the corner from hitting that 1 million user mark globally, all of whom are able to use this amazing app built entirely in Flutter. That's really great, Jacob. I want to ask you a couple questions. Um, was this your first Flutter app? Yes, it was. And how many engineers were working on it? So just me for the front end. And how long did it take you? So uh, the first uh, line of Flutter was written in March. And with the learning curve, we got this completed in two and a half months. OK, that's crazy. Wow. All right, great job, Jacob. Thank, Thank you. you. We are launching a clone program. <laughs> Just kidding. I am indeed lucky to have a twin. And he's an engineer. This is Luigi, by the way. But thanks to our new tool and Flutter, you won't need a complimentary twin like us. Here today to tell you guys about a new product we built called Flare. Flare is a vector design and runtime animation tool that exports directly to Flutter. Guido and I built Flare so that designers like ourselves and developers can work in parallel. If you're a designer, the biggest advantage to Flare is that you don't need to work, that you do get to work directly on the assets that run in your final app. That means you don't need to design in one app, animate in another app, um, redline your mockups, write up a 100-page guide to basically help your engineering team redo all the work that you already did. Everything that you design in Flare is exactly what runs in Flutter. Not only does this open up your entire team to be able to quickly iterate, but it also allows you to make great design a part of your process from the very beginning right up until the completion of your app. So we have a demo, and we're going to show you how all of this works. So what Guido's going to pull up here is a Flutter list view that's hooked up to a Flare pull down refresh animation. Now what you can see is as Guido pulls the list down, there's a zoom animation that progresses with the movement of the list. And at the same time, there are a couple different idle animations, like the Earth spinning, the stars twinkling, and some of the comets that are shooting by that are blended on top. And this is done regardless of where Guido's finger is placed or where the list view is placed. This is all animated in different layers. User know, you know, something happened, success. And then it goes into this loading indeterminate state where it's basically waiting for the loading to fit. I'm going to grab the moon orbit keyframes here and just hit delete. Now, what I actually want to do is have the moon kind of move from, the, from a side view. I want it to order so that it switches, and you can see that we've got our new orbit here. Now, I'm going to do just one last thing to really solve this animation, and that's to add just a little bit of scale to make this look cartoony. So I'm going to add two keyframes first for our normal scale, and then right about here where the moon is passing in front of the Earth, I'm going to double our x. And you'll see that this creates just a little bit of playfulness. All right. I think that's good enough for now. Let's see how I get this back into Flutter. I'm going to hit Export, switch over to our assets, and just drag and drop our new asset over the old one, hit Replace. And then I switch over to VS Code, do a hot restart because we need to reload our asset. And we've got my new moon animation in there. <laughs> I was able. And it's free. Time tech checking, increased performance, and reduced code size. Provided using Flare. Right now, the avatar is just standing idle. That's kind of boring. So what we can actually do is we can move these sliders. We can have his face animation move. And have some funny expressions as well. We, need, we can even. I think it's already set up. See, there we go. There we go. 
We believe Flutter is a useful building block for these kinds of embedded scenarios. And perhaps in the future, we'll see Flutter powering things like automotive displays or other IoT kinds of devices. Another very practical example of how we are already going beyond mobile is Flutter desktop embedding. This is an open source project that enables Flutter apps to run on Mac, Linux, and Windows. We've been working on Flutter desktop embedding in the open for a few months now, and we're pretty happy with how it's coming on together. This lets you uh, do things like take your basic starter application uh, that you get when you create a Flutter project and run it on a Mac. So like, here's, the, uh, here's the usual app here, and you can imagine, you, know, you can plus and see uh, you know, how the uh, number increments. And in fact, when we were putting this presentation together, we were thinking, how could we make our slides as beautiful as possible? So we built the entire presentation in Flutter. <laughs> we're calling this Hummingbird. And it's a port of Flutter that runs on the modern standards-based web. Yeah. I'm going to show you a little demo of Hummingbird now. Here's a simple mobile app that we've been running on an Android tablet. It's an implementation of the 15-tile sliding puzzle uh, that I suspect we all know pretty well. You know, I can move tiles around, and I can auto-play it. Uh, we've done the usual Flutter things. We've added a little bit of styling to it to make it look beautiful, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to open Chrome and browse to this page. And everything you're seeing here is Flutter running on a desktop web browser. Everything you're seeing here. <laughs> Everything you're seeing here is standards-based content. HTML, DOM, Canvas, JavaScript. There's no black box here any more than any other web content. Importantly, it's the same Flutter code running in this browser as on the phone. We haven't had to change the code to get it to run here. We've still got some optimization work to do, but you can see that we're getting 60 frames per second for this scenario across the current generation of devices. And because this is the web, I can even turn it into a PWA if I want to, thanks to the great work from the Chrome team. So that's Hummingbird. What do you think? <laughs>